This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it is Saturday, and that means it's time for another video in my History of the Banned and Restricted list. In this series, I provide the context and explain the reasons that cards were banned or restricted in Magic's various formats that are played at the premier level of competition. This is limited only to formats played at Grand Prix and Pro Tour main events as well as Vintage. Our very first video in this series started with the very first ban list that came out in 1994, and today we're at part 23, where I'll be covering all the cards that were banned or restricted in 2016. Last time we looked at 2015, which was mostly a quiet year with only four cards that needed to be axed, but we also saw that two cards with Delve completely warped every single format in Magic, and as a result they were banned everywhere but Vintage, where they were restricted. This time around we have four cards to look at. The interesting thing is that all four of the cards we'll be looking at in this video had actually been around for a while, so it isn't like 2015 where two new cards screwed everything up. Various things transpired in 2016 to lead to these cards suddenly becoming more dominant. That said, as we'll see, one of the cards became too good because of new cards Wizards printed in 2015, so there were still some problematic new cards that caused the problems in 2016, even if none of them were the ones that got banned. The first changes to the list in 2016 came in January, and both cards that got banned were banned in Modern. And in fact, looking at 2016 more broadly, three of the four cards we'll be talking about in this video got the axe in Modern, so it was a pretty rough year for the format. The first two bannings of the year were Splinter Twin and Summer Bloom. As I noted, both of these cards had been around for a while, but the decks that they were a part of became increasingly dominant in 2016, and Wizards axed them both as a result. Let's talk about Splinter Twin first. Splinter Twin decks were blue-red control decks that had a combo win condition. The plan was either to get Pestermite or Deceiver Exarch into play, then put Splinter Twin on that creature. Then, when you tap the creature to create a token copy, the token copies into the battlefield ability then triggers, untapping the creature with Splinter Twin attached to it. You can then make as many copies as you want and win the game right away. Pestermite and Exarch having flash was a big deal too, as it made it even easier to pull off the combo by flashing the creature in at the end of your opponent's turn, and then putting Splinter Twin on your creature on your turn. These decks were strong because they were excellent at interaction, in addition to having a quick combo kill, and they could very effectively defend against attempts by the opponent to disrupt the combo. Splinter Twin decks were not something that was new to Modern in 2016. They had existed since the format was created in 2011, However, in 2015, in the wake of the bannings that had weakened Delver decks and eliminated Birthing Pod decks entirely, Splinter Twin emerged as the most frequently played deck in the format, and it also found a ton of success, threatening competitive diversity. There was basically no reason to play a control deck anymore that didn't have the Twin combo as a win condition. As a result of all of this, Splinter Twin got banned in January of 2016. This is one of the more contentious bans that we've seen, at least in recent memory, mostly because players felt like the Twin deck was fair, not one that seemed overly busted. But since Twin got banned, Modern did become an increasingly diverse format, so I think it achieved what Wizards wanted it to achieve for the most part. It remains banned in Modern today. The other card banned out of Modern in January of 2016 was Summer Bloom. Like Splinter Twin, Summer Bloom enabled a powerful combo in Modern. In the case of the Bloom, it was used in Amulet Titan decks. These decks sought to use Amulet of Vigor with the Ravnica Bounce Lands. Their plan was to play the Amulet and then play a Bounce Land. It would enter the battlefield untapped, and when its bounce trigger was on the stack, you could tap it for mana. This means that these lands each give you two mana a turn. You can see why it would be scary to add Summer Bloom to the mix, because it would let you do this four times in a turn, netting a total of six mana, because you have to subtract the two you paid for Summer Bloom. That huge mana could then be used to cast a Primeval Titan, who would continue to allow you to amass more and more mana. With the Titan's trigger, you could also search up lands that would come into play untapped because of Amulet of Vigor, and those lands would often allow you to get pretty close to one-shotting your opponent with the Titan, Lands like Slayer's Stronghold or Fortress of the Legion were often searched up. 
It had other potential win conditions too, like combining Summoner's Pact with Hive Mind. That win condition, in particular, was the one that really caused Summer Bloom to get banned. This is because combining Amulet and Pact and Hive Mind allowed you to win the game on turn 3, and Modern is supposed to be a format where no deck can consistently win before turn 4. And the absurd amount of mana that Summer Bloom allows you to produce was making the deck a real problem. Summer Bloom remains banned in Modern today. Amulet Titan decks have managed to live on, though they aren't quite as powerful as they were with Summer Bloom, they are still one of the best decks in the format. So, Modern had to be straightened out by two bannings in early 2016, but a new completely busted deck would emerge in Modern later in the year, prompting another ban in the format. The other two cards that would be banned or restricted in 2016 were both added to the list in April. Eye of Ugin was banned in Modern, and Lodestone Golem was restricted in Vintage. Let's start with Eye of Ugin first. So, like Splinter Twin and Summer Bloom, Eye of Ugin was not a new card at all. But, new cards printed in 2016 are what ended up utterly breaking Eye of Ugin. The Eye hadn't really seen much play up through 2015, and this is because there were only a handful of Eldrazi worth playing, and they mostly cost insane amounts of mana, so most people cheat them into play in various ways. They don't actually plan on casting Eldrazi. So, reducing the cost of a 15 mana Eldrazi isn't going to make a huge difference, and as a result, not that many decks were running Eye of Ugin. However, in 2015 and 2016, we had Battle for Zendikar block. This set brought back the Eldrazi, and Wizards did something they hadn't really done so far. They printed powerful Eldrazi with much lower mana costs. There are many examples of this in the block, but perhaps the biggest offenders were Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher. Eldrazi decks in Modern had access not only to the Eye, but also Eldrazi Temple. This basically gave the deck two different lands that could produce two mana, allowing for absurdly early Eldrazi to come down, like the Seer and the Smasher. Basically, in printing these cheap and highly pushed Eldrazi, Wizards overlooked the fact that it would create an utterly busted deck that was good enough to impact all of Magic's non-rotating formats. Let me walk you through a pretty normal first two turns for this deck, so you can get a feeling of just how fast the deck was. You could start with a turn 1 Eldrazi Mimic, and then follow that up on turn 2 by exiling Simeon's Spirit Guide and playing a turn 2 Reality Smasher and swinging for 10. This was a pretty common way these decks would begin the game. This new Eldrazi aggro deck proved to be too good for modern, creating what became known as Eldrazi Winter, wherein most major events were utterly dominated by the deck. Between February and March of 2016, Eldrazi aggro decks were 6 of the top 8 decks at Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch, 4 of the top 8s at Grand Prix Melbourne, and 6 of the top 8 decks at Grand Prix Bologna in 2016. Those were the only 3 modern events where the deck was allowed to operate using Eye of Ugin, though, because the card would get banned in April of 2016. As an indication of just how strong these decks were, one need only look at the fact that the deck has largely been ported to Legacy and Vintage where the Eye is still legal. In those formats, the deck is one of the top ones around. The other card to get banned or restricted in April of 2016 was Lodestone Golem, which got restricted in Vintage. In 2015, we saw that Chalice of the Void got the axe because it was making it so that people couldn't play their Power 9 Mana Rocks. The deck that was abusing the Chalice the most was Mishra's Workshop decks. These decks seek to use the insane fast mana that Workshop provides to dump their whole hand on turn 1. Before Chalice of the Void got restricted, this often involved dropping a 0 mana Chalice of the Void to make it so your opponent couldn't use most of their fast mana, and in most cases you would quickly overwhelm them. Well, it turned out restricting Chalice didn't do quite enough, and that's because of Lodestone Golem. Lodestone Golem ended up really only being a one-sided effect in Workshop decks, and while it didn't prevent opponents from being able to play their Power 9 Mana Rocks, a Turn 1 Lodestone Golem was still enough to make games very uninteractive, and it getting dropped on Turn 1 gave Workshop decks a huge chance of winning the game. Ultimately, the Golem got restricted to further weaken Shop's decks, which were just too strong in Vintage, where they could play four copies of this guy. Lodestone Golem remains restricted in Vintage today. So, overall, 2016 was kind of a rough year, especially for Modern, which basically had to be completely overhauled, with three different decks being either completely banned out of the format or severely weakened. Eldrazi Winter was probably the biggest problem of the year. 
The good news is that Standard didn't have many problems in 2016, and not a single card was banned in that format. So at least Wizards was doing a good job avoiding busted cards for Standard, right? But as we'll see going forward, this would not continue to be the case, as 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 have all seen cards banned out of Standard. Well, that does it for this episode of the History of the Banned and Restricted list. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you see future episodes of this series, don't forget to subscribe. And if you need to catch up on the first 22 episodes, you should see the playlist on your screen now. Thanks for watching.